Midjourney has just released a new prompt that anchors in character consistency, and it's finally easy for even the most beginner level user of Midjourney to generate consistent characters that you can jump through different genres, different styles, and finally create those children's storybooks, color books, comic books that we've all been dreaming of. This is an absolute game changer, and it just released less than 24 hours ago. I hope you guys are as excited as I am because we're going to decide right now if character consistency has finally arrived and if all those artists from around the world need to be gnashing their teeth and start looking for another career, or is this a tool they can use to accelerate their own careers? We're going to find out right after this intro. Let's fire up that music. Let's start by looking at the announcement from Midjourney, and then I'll show you exactly how to use this tool. Now this builds on top of the style reference, which I taught you about in a previous video, which you can see right here, which was all about style consistency. Now we have a new ability called character consistency, or they call it character reference, but we use it to create consistency. That's the result we're going to get. Dash dash CREF stands for dash dash character reference, just like we're using dash dash style reference to create the style. You can then enter dash dash CW, which stands for character weight although they call it character strength, even though it's a W, and it ranks from 100 to 0. At 100, it's going to use the face, hair, and clothes. At 0, it's just going to use the face and allow you to put the character in different situations. This is meant for characters made from inner mid-journey images, not from real people or photos. It will likely distort them because it's not designed that way yet. And it works similar to other image prompts, except for it focuses on the character traits, and the precision's limited. So it says it won't copy exact dimples, freckles, or t-shirt logos. That's where its weaknesses are, but it can do just about everything else. And it works with both Midjourney and Niji. Let me show you how it works. We're going to use alpha.midjourney.com. When you click on these lines, you'll see all the options. What we want to be is it's stylized between three to 400. I want landscape, so I'm at 16 by nine. And most importantly, I'm in raw mode. This is where all the best stuff happens. So my initial prompt is beautiful woman in a little black dress with diamond necklace blue eyes in the style of cinematic. We have four images here. And I then choose the one I like the most and I bring her into future images. We can just drag her into an image. We don't even have to upscale. Now here's what's important. There are three buttons here. The first one is character reference. The second is style reference. The third is image reference. If you forget to click, it's not going to work. That will cause a fail. You'll see in my demos, sometimes I click the wrong button and it didn't work. So very important. Character reference, style reference, image reference. When we're modifying these, this becomes really important because it's CW, SW, IW to modify them. We now have our character, but look what happens when I say a woman on a boat at sunset. She has to be facing me because that's the role from the character reference. But we have her facing the sunset. That's why her head is going in the opposite direction of her body. We get a grotesque result because it's merging two prompts that are at war with each other. In every one of these cases, they flipped her head around. So how do we solve this problem? We lower the CW. So now we're saying character weight zero, which means just use her face, but you don't have to put her in the same clothes or the same body. Notice here, she keeps trying to wear the same clothes. Now we're giving permission to change. We're getting better. This is broken. Broken. This one's acceptable. It's still weird, but she doesn't look damaged. And this is the first one that's okay. This is a great image of her. Now let's try modifying our prompt by adding the words facing camera. So we have a woman on a boat, rowboat at sunset facing camera with a character weight of zero. Not quite right. The face is still twisted. But we have a great result here. A great result here. And this one's off. We have two absolute winners that we can now build on. The next thing we can do is start playing around with style and put her into other situations and other genres. So we now have Final Fantasy loading screen with our same character, but it's at character weight 100. What happens? She's wearing a black dress and diamonds again. It puts her back in the original outfit. She doesn't quite fit into the Final Fantasy world, and she's wearing the same dress in every single picture because the dress came with her. Watch what happens when we drop that weight to zero. Suddenly, it's the same woman in Final Fantasy, in Final Fantasy Close. Here she is looking perfect, perfect, perfect. In different situations, different clothes, because they're replacing different Final Fantasy style characters with our actress. 
Now let's try cowgirl riding a horse holding a revolver. Because we have CW100 or maximized, we don't even see the horse. We have the revolver, but she's still wearing her party dress. It doesn't really make sense because she's locked in. We can see the hint of the horse here and the ear of the horse here, but she's obviously not riding the horse. Only one of the four images is she possibly riding the horse, but now we don't see the revolver. When we leave character weight or character reference at 100, it's very hard to get the rest of the image. This is what happens when we drop it to 50. This is the middle. We have her holding revolver. Eyes are perfect. There's the horse. Horse in the background. Here's the horse barely. And no horse in this one. But these are all great images. And now she's fitting the Western style. This is what happens when we do character weight 50. And I encourage you to test the range of character weights because you're going to get a different result. This does require a little bit of tuning and a little bit of customization to get the exact result you want. And it's going to be different each time you work through this process with each different character. When we drop the character weight down to zero, we lose the horse completely, but we get amazing pictures that feel very Western, very real. It's the same woman in every single picture. The next step in our process is to anchor the style. For this prompt, we have cowgirl riding a horse, holding a revolver, and we have a character weight and we have a style weight. So we have our image of the woman to be our actress. And then we have our picture from the consistency video, which I posted a couple of weeks ago showing how to create consistent style. We merge those things together. Now we have her, all four images of her are from the same comic book or the same television show. We have a consistent style mixed with a consistent character. Now our actress is in different settings, but we've anchored the two different elements, which is the actress and the style. And we can do this in every type of image we want. Here she is at a wedding in the Wild West. Again, we want to make sure that we keep the character weight at zero so that she can wear different outfits and she has an amazing wedding dress here. And we can upscale to see the rest of the picture from a distance so we can pull out the rest of her wedding dress and get an amazing result. This is the beginning of something really amazing and I hope it has you absolutely excited. This is how you can use the new prompt to create consistent characters with Mid Journey. Character consistency is an absolute game changer, and I hope you're as excited as I am. Just a few days ago, I posted my video about creating style sheets, which is another method of getting character consistency. But with this new prompt, everything is so much easier. This is the easiest method I've ever seen to get the same character, different scenes, and different styles. And I want to see what you can do. Show me in the comments or link me to your images where you're creating and mixing and matching characters and styles because I want to see what you guys are capable of. I'm so excited by this. I hope you found this as exciting and useful as I did. If you did, please hit the like. I always do my best to earn that. And if you want to see more content like this coming in your feed, hit the subscribe button. If you take the time to hit the bell, you'll get notified every single time I post a video, which is every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for the next year. I'm dedicated to growing this channel. We just hit a thousand subscribers and this is part of that celebration. I appreciate you spending time with me. I want to show you how you can use these tools to create AI images. Now, I know there's some debate in the comments about whether or not this is AI art or AI images. So I am trying to use the new term because I understand that this is an amalgamation of creations rather than creating something original. But golly, this has me so excited. There are so many things we can do now. You can take this character and put them in different scenes, take the character and put them in different styles. And now you have an actress that you can use over and over and over again. This is just the beginning of what I have to show you. This is the beginning of character consistency. It's only been available for 24 hours. I have so much more to show you in the coming days, but I wanted to get this out as quickly as possible. As always, thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Hit the like button and then I've got a couple of sweet videos that I think you're going to like. I've got one here and another one over here. You're going to love them.